fresh out of the shower, I'm Hat Gun, and this is my vlog. Yeah, really such a weird term. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> so I've recently been playing, uh, I mean, along, along with working on curricula for my classes, some of which you can track because I've posted links to them on Google+, some of which I'll be posting links to shortly. Um, I've been playing Wolfenstein New Order. I'm just about at the end of the game. In that I've finally reached the last boss, and I'm having a little bit of trouble beating him. Uh, but that's what really uh, one of the better things about the game. There, uh, it's just it's reasonably difficult at moderate uh, difficulty, and the level design and scenarios that you have to work through it makes it feel. I don't know. It feels like you have to have to bring a different tactic uh, to every. Uh, to every big fighting map that you have to deal with, and that's just a lot of fun. Um, but I have been thinking back a little bit over two oddities with, with the game. The first is the negative association that it builds with the German language, which, I mean, I suppose, having had uh, Shoah caused by um, a a past German government, it's really bad PR to begin with, and it's not like the game is going to make a big difference, but at least personally I find it a little bit weird to... I mean, uh, German is one of the languages that I speak, and I find it weird to feel the associations that I have with the language shifting around as I suddenly am encountering Germ uh, German in a very negative context. It's, it's weird. I mean, it's not that not something that I think is ban-worthy or anything like that. I don't really believe that it's appropriate to um, to attempt to police this kind of thing. Uh, and and even this this even extends uh, it extends uh, very broadly. I, I don't think that the idea that something necessarily has odd connotations. Like I had this experience with Grand Theft Auto, where I found my uh, feelings uh, uh, when I interacted with police to be shifted around. I found myself becoming more aggressive on the road. <clears throat> the fact that that happens isn't a justification to ban these things, but uh, or at least in, in my view, I think it's rather it's something that when you notice, or you should keep an eye out for it, you should attempt to counteract these effects, or at least to notice that they're happening and to think about them and uh, maybe try and find a way to have them not affect you so much. Um, I, I have reasonably high expectations of people's abilities to handle rough content, content that might theoretically have some effect on their real-life behavior. I think it's too great a burden on culture to uh, attempt to either argue that culture shouldn't do that, <clears throat> or that people should avoid those areas of culture. Um, I, and I'm even willing to accept some effects, uh, if, if somebody, <clears throat> if somebody is really into a certain kind of porn and it changes a, a bit the way that they interact with their partners, um, that can be okay, depends on what that bit is, of course, but, um, but, uh, it's, it's just, it, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's appropriate to, to try and get rid of the cultural content as fully, or at least as people who aim to self-actualize, um, we should at least be very, very wary of taking action on those effects. Um, the other interesting thing about Wolfenstein New Order is that you face a moral choice um, uh, early in the game, or at least what would be a moral choice if, these, if it weren't a video game. Um, you basically are given a choice as to a foe asks you to choose one of your two, uh, or one of your, uh, one of two people who are your allies, um, uh, which of them is going to die in a particularly nasty way. And obviously, I, pr uh, well, I mean, it's not necessarily obviously. People don't always bring their full moral compass to a video game because they realize these aren't real people, there aren't real consequences, there probably isn't a, a reason to really worry about. Um, <clears throat> worry about this kind of thing. I, I bring a bit of my moral compass. The more visceral things, uh, I think people don't generally bring. Like, you might play a video game where you're fighting people uh, a lot, 
and you don't have to deal with the visceral horror of actually uh, making an action to hurt somebody and see them being hurt. I think that if we did have issues with that, it would ruin a lot of video games. But fortunately, it just they're not realistic enough, or we just intellectually know that it's not a real person. We don't usually bring that, or at least I don't. Maybe there are some people who don't play video games, or don't play certain types of video games because it's too real for them. But um, in any case, I I tried uh, in that scenario just waiting and not doing anything, and eventually, uh, just all three uh, all three of you along with the others in the scene are killed by that foe. So you are effectively forced to choose, which is kind of good in a way because you end up having way too many films and comic books and stuff where they live in a world where hard choices just never happen. Now, it, admittedly, false dualism is another worry uh, in uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of these choices, and maybe it's it's good to have people thinking there's got to be a third choice. Uh, whenever they're faced with a tough choice. But sometimes you really have to make a tough choice. Um, and there isn't a third way. Uh, or or the third way is just as rotten. And there might be like a hundred ways, but they're all rotten in some way. Like if you were trying to set a budget uh, for a school, for a government, for an, any of these things, you'd, you can't have everybody win. And you're going to have some really worthwhile people or causes not being advanced as much as you would like them to. And then philosophy in general is like this. You, you have a lot of different commitments to a lot of different goods. And you can't, you just can't have them all win. So you have to make a choice. So I did make a choice at this point in the game as to who, who, who lives and who dies among my allies, at least immediately. Now it's interesting to, the looking back on it is is a different uh like what would i do if i knew uh knew then what i know now um that's a different choice than what do you do knowing what you know at the moment and admittedly you can try and bridge that by sticking some kind of a statistical model involving uncertainty uh pushing that backwards and allowing the present to vary and just holding the the, the past as fixed that is like if you were in the past it, and projecting forward based on the information that you have at the time, what would you do? And that, that helps you really think about the past in a more reasonable way than asking, like, uh, than trying to project all of present knowledge back into the past. But yeah, so I, I picked someone, uh, someone to die and someone to live. And knowing that this is a video game, uh, I made a choice I liked a certain character's accent, and I thought it would be better to play the game, uh, presuming that, that the character who lives uh, will carry forward into the game, which was a guess. I didn't know that for sure. Um, but I thought it would be nice to, to play a game where I hear a, a lot more of that accent. And it, basically, it's, it's an Irish or Scottish accent. Um, and I happen to like those accents, just like I, I enjoy Southern accents. Um, being from the South, maybe maybe being Scottish, although I didn't grow up in Scotland and didn't grow up hearing a lot of Scottish accents apart from on TV. Um, but yeah, I made a choice, and I'm not sure if it's the same choice that I would have made were, uh, were I to know, for example, if I were to know with certainty that not making a choice would result in me and everybody else there dying, but making a choice would result in an immediate death, but who knows what would happen in the future. Um, I'm not sure I would have made the same choice. Basically, it came down to keeping an older, I think I, I'm pretty, pretty sure he's Irish, an older Irish dude alive or a young American uh, dude alive. Um, just assuming that, that we were going to be put back in prison cells and trying, uh, still trying to escape, uh, would you prefer to go with somebody who has a lot of experience or somebody who's green, uh, but who seems to be a bit, uh, probably a bit healthier because they're younger? Um, well, that's kind of a, a, a tough choice. I mean, you have to figure out, is experience worth more or is health worth more? 
and uh, of course later on in the game you can look back and uh, you, you might actually if you knew or at least you had a good reason to believe that you're going to survive and there are questions like who has more family who would prefer to live uh, has does somebody have kids um, who, who has more of their life ahead of them. There are a lot of ways in which, presumably, if we ever find ourselves like on a lifeboat, um, uh, on a lifeboat starving in the middle of the ocean, uh, who gets eaten? I suppose probably being vegetarian, uh, I would probably volunteer myself to be eaten because I'm not going to be able to keep meat down probably of any kind. And uh, so it would make more sense for somebody who isn't vegetarian to, uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, it's a weird thing to talk about while I'm eating. Um, I have a, uh, I have, um, a sushi, a vegetarian sushi that I made. Um, it's not very good for you, but it's avocado, it's an avocado, uh, avocado roll and it's basically rice and avocado in there. But yeah, there are all sorts of different ways to frame these questions. Fortunately, in, in real life, we don't have to face them very often. I think I might have talked about this before, but I don't remember, so I'll talk about it again, what might be again. Like, in, in, there are games like Skyrim, where you're asked, uh, where you might choose in the middle of the Civil War which uh, side to, to take. And you don't have to take a side with that. And there, generally, I go with the Empire. Um, because I believe in civilization, and I believe that civilization is best done at scale. Reasonable scale, not the biggest scale possible. And so, uh, is that there? No, it's not. It's just a scrape of the cup. Um, and, I mean, it's made a little bit more complicated by the fact that the Empire has, uh, has submitted to a foreign power that's particularly nasty that's kind of spawned the rebellion. And uh, and so somebody might reasonably make the, make the case that I'm going to go against the empire for now and let it fall apart uh, and start, start our own little government here that will eventually grow up to the size of and regenerate the empire after fighting the baddies that the empire has uh, submitted to, which would be another choice compatible with, with my values. Um, and one does have to generally think about the long term when making choices of state. But just my gut instinct would be to go with, with the Empire rather than with, uh, um, oh, what is his name? The, the name of that character that leads the, uh, Ulfric, uh, leads the rebellion. <clears throat> but yeah, you, you find yourself making choices that in real life you would practically never have to make. But I suppose in, in video games there's a reason for this, and that a lot of the choices are interesting because they're big choices. They change the world a lot. They're dramatic. In real life, we live in a world uh, world with billions of people, and very few people get to make choices that shape uh, the lives of billions of people, and or or even hundreds of people, uh, even tens of people, uh, like. The, the impact that you're going to have in, in life, generally speaking, isn't going to be very big. And given how many people there are, that's not surprising. Now, there are some bad ways that can give you a lot more impact on the world. Uh, but generally, responsible, sane ways that, that leave you with, with a lot of impact, they're rare. Like, you could become a ser serial murderer. And you'll certainly have a lot of impact on the world, but it's a very irresponsible way to do it. So, uh, or if, even if you like lead a country, you're probably not going to impact the world a lot unless you do something really stupid, like starting a war. I mean, starting a war isn't always stupid, but generally speaking, starting one unprovoked without any good reason, it's a dumb thing to do. And it, it you'll impact a lot of lives, even more than you can uh, leading a government and setting its policies, but it's not a great way to achieve uh, fame. So, yeah, it's, 
the Wolfenstein series, it is kind of impossible because you are one one person or one of a small set of people who presumably are going to be shaping the uh, fate of the world. There are some themes in, in Wolfenstein New Order that are pretty interesting, but I'm going to avoid talking about them because you might plan to play it but haven't played it yet, and I'd prefer not to, uh, not to spoil any more than I already have. <clears throat> so, it's a good game. I'm very near the end. I'll probably replay through it a few times. I've bought a few more games, but I'm not sure when I'm going to get to them because I, I want to work more on class stuff, and when I play a game, it tends to consume a lot of my free time. And I still enjoy gaming. It just did something which uh, I prefer not to do a lot of it in close succession. Um, so the, the other games that I bought recently are... Uh, I mean, apart from Child of Light, which I bought not so long ago and played through, and it wasn't a super long game, I bought a game called uh, DMC Devil May Cry, which got good reviews. Um, the patch to Goat Simulator should be coming out, which adds a new map and a whole lot of content. Looking forward to that. But that's a very casual game, so I'll probably uh, just play it whenever I feel like it. I never play... I never play it for a really, really long period of time at once. So it's the right kind of game for, for when you're still, <coughs> excuse me, uh, working on a uh, work stuff. Uh, there's a game called Kingdoms of Am uh, Amalur Reckoning, which also got good reviews. Uh, there's a game called Long Live the Queen, which is another casual game, which I occasionally play through. Um, there's a game called uh, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings, which I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to playing at some point. And then there's a, uh, a game called a Metro uh, 2033 and its sequel that are about to get an enhanced remake that I've been thinking about getting for a while, and that they have an enhanced remake coming out soon makes it even better. Looking forward to playing that. <clears throat> but I'm probably going to put put off playing those for a little bit, just uh, because I, um, I'm i at a good place for some of my class materials. I'm feeling really productive, and, uh, and I don't want too many more distractions, at least in the medium term, while I'm working through those. Plus, I have a new job starting up, which, I mean, playing games doesn't interfere with the job, but there are some technologies that I'm learning for that job, uh, namely Chef uh, and... Uh, I think it's it's good that I, uh, I I at least make sure I I I'm spending some time on that. Plus, video games tend to keep me in my apartment, and it's good to get out. So, and, and I guess the the weather's getting nice, so this is the perfect time to be out. It's not like it's cold and slushy or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so I mentioned I have a new job starting up. Starts on Tuesday. Looking forward to it. I got some new shoes. Unfortunately. My feet are uh, are really big and a little bit oddly shaped, and I typically have to get some really nice shoes to to, uh, to even fit them. So I went up to a Mephisto store up near Lex and 59th and got two pairs of shoes. Um, one of them is an exact copy of my old shoes, which has the unfortunate side effect that uh, generally I get a blister, or at least I got blisters last time on uh, when I was uh, wearing these shoes in. And, uh, and I'm still, uh, and I, uh, that's happening again with, with this pair. Hopefully that problem will be solved soon because it's not really fun limping around town. I'm not limping so much, but it's just, it hurts and it's really unpleasant blister. Um, <clears throat> but it, it, but they, apart from the blister, they feel a lot better than the old shoes, which had become extremely worn down. Um, I, I tend to get expensive shoes and wear them for a really long time rather than cheap shoes for a short time. Uh, so I'm getting ready for work. I'm trying to adjust my sleep schedule back towards what's appropriate for uh, working uh, 8 to 4 or 9 to 5 or whatever it'll end up being. Looking forward to facing new infrastructure challenges. And also I'm looking forward to having the funds I really need to build my own little experimental compute cluster at home. Um, there are technologies which I want to learn, which uh, I 
I just, uh, so far, you, you need more than two computers or more than three computers to really do some kinds of experiments with some kinds of system software. And I need to get some Cisco switches to uh, just to brush up on some things. And I am finally going to make this happen as soon as I get a few paychecks under my belt. Um, there's something called CoreOS. It's a Linux distribution that's built around Docker. Docker, it's a um, it's a system whereby you package applications into bundles, like uh, and an application not meaning like an unconfigured application, but like I'm sorry, I'm not explaining this very well. You package server chunks of a server into bundles, discrete bundles that run inside usually a Linux container, and um, and this is an already configured chunk of a, of a server configuration. Like you might, instead of, say, having a package of Apache, you might have a dock of, um, of Apache configured with, with the proxy content or with the static content, uh, and a, a database might be a, a dock. And so you work with docs, you deploy them, uh, instead, of, instead of like having Puppet or Chef, combined with the basic application that you want, you you have a finished product more or less that that is a doc that should run on your server no matter what, that's managed independently of your uh, of your distributions package system. Now there are some downsides to this, I think. Um, how do you handle versioning? How do you handle patching uh, or patching of uh, of this software component. I don't know what the answer to that is yet, which is why I want to experiment with it. But CoreOS, it's a dis distribution that takes um, Docker as its uh, package distribution system it adds high-end clustering features that uh, there are just some things that are a lot easier to do when you package um, software components at, at, as docs rather than as traditional uh, packages. So it's, it's an interesting new approach. I don't know if it's the best approach, but I, I really want to play with it. But I need a cluster to do that. And I could use Google Compute Engine uh, because recently uh, the, uh, the people who are developing uh, CoreOS, they worked with Google and got official packages for GCE put together. But I don't think that would give me the same full experience as building it myself. So, uh, <clears throat> so I might I might do that, but I, I still probably will want to uh, want to build my own cluster at home. Plus, I I want to experiment with Cisco stuff. A little bit more, and uh, there are a lot more experiments that I, I want to do. Um, still working on losing weight, not being particularly effective there, but I am realizing that a lot of the time I eat when I'm not actually hungry. It just becomes a habit. And I think if I can change that habit, then I should be able to change, uh, or that should set my weight on a slope towards what I, uh, what I want it to be. Uh, this has been hampered a little bit by the fact that I enjoy eating out, and usually there are time limits on eating out. Plus, I'm not the greatest of, of cooks. But I, uh, but at least it's useful to have that realization that that is that's probably part of um, the the weight issue. And of course, exercising more could help, but um, but it's not, I'm not always in the mood to do that, so that can't be the only driver. Changing my eating habits should help a lot. Um, when it comes to cooking, I'm learning that big avocados are a really bad idea. And the avocados, I think when they're, when they're on the tree or when they're getting ready to drop, they're kind of hard. They're not really easy to cook with. So normally you leave them out on a shelf for a few days to let them soften. But... Small avocados do that nicely, and you can just squeeze them every so often to see, is this ready to eat? Um, it, it's often inc inconvenient if you decide, I want avocados now, since you, 
uh, the, normally the stores won't sell them when they're exactly at the right time to eat. Like they'll sell them a little bit before and you have to wait. But, um, but small avocados, typically the whole avocado is ready to eat at the same time. Big avocados, they get soft uh, in different, uh, in the, uh, in the outer layers a lot quicker than they do in the inner, la uh, inner layers. So that's, that's a problem. I should stop buying big avocados, but it's just, I guess it's just one of these like home economics type knowledge, uh, bits of knowledge that, that you learn, either somebody teaches it to you or, or you learn it over life. Like if you leave water flowing over something for a long time, then that's a reasonable way to get something clean. It's a very lazy way to get something clean. So if you don't want to put a lot of effort into cleaning, um, <clears throat> then arrange for water to flow over it for a long time. Unfortunately, it's wasteful of water. And I guess it's kind of irresponsible to rely on that for too much stuff. But but yeah, hot water is just, it's an amazing way to get things uh, clean. Um, so what's been going on? I think last time I did, uh, yeah, it was this last Monday that I did the last recording. So on Tuesday, uh, or Tuesday, maybe it was Tuesday that I did it. It was every, yeah, I think maybe it was Tuesday that I did the last recording. That was everybody at Toronto Mohammed Day. Didn't actually draw it. I think I was too tired by the time I realized it was the, uh, the day for that. Plus, yeah, I'm not a great drawer. And, um, and as much as I think that everybody from Mohammed Day is a good idea to break taboos, to make it clear that we don't pay attention to certain taboos, um, that doesn't mean that I necessarily would want to... Uh, I would probably be doing it in a way that's not explicitly trying to be offensive by my terms. Even if it's necessarily offensive by the terms of the people who believe in that taboo, um, I judge my actions by my terms. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I don't, for his time, I don't think Muhammad was necessarily a, a bad idea, a, a bad, uh, bad guy. He probably was mentally ill. Most people who believe that they've talked to God were, and you find symptoms like that, uh, symptoms of mental illness typically described by uh, in religions of people who are undergoing religious experiences. But uh, for, for, for his time, he probably wasn't a bad, uh, bad guy. Of course, we judge people both, both by their time and by our standards, but, um, and it's appropriate to do so. It's, we don't want to whitewash the past, um, but we also don't want to hold people to, to standards that weren't even remotely invented at the time. Um, on Wednesday, I went to a uh, an event at the Transit Museum about the design of the Metro card. That was really cool. Uh, they talked about the original design of the Metro card and how it was introduced, and then the revisions that they went through when they were changing it uh, for the Metro card Gold, which was basically it was the Metro card system, but uh, it was uh, enhanced to let people transfer between subways and buses. Um, and uh, and so the, uh, the MTA decided to have a um, have a revision to the Metro card to make it clear that this was now possible, but you probably need to get a new card for it to work. But yeah, we, we saw a lot of the design criteria that went into uh, it went into that Metro card design. We saw a lot of past Metro cards, heard a lot of history. It was really cool, and it was a pretty packed house. Um, on Thursday, I went to get new shoes, and Friday didn't do a lot. Uh, yesterday, um, so th there is a game that I play pretty regularly called Kingdom of Loathing. It's an MMORPG. It's not really very multiplayer, though. It's more of a chat room joined uh, MMO with a, few, with a little bit of shared content, but largely it's a text-based adventure. It's like a mud kind of. Uh, if you know what a mud is. Um, if you don't, go look it up. Uh, Multi-user dungeon. Um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, I told you what the word means, but there's a lot more to it than that, so go look that up. Uh, but, yeah, Kingdom of Loathing, it's a kind of humorous, uh, text, mostly text-based adventure. 
you only play a certain number of turns per day, which is why it won't ever consume your life, or at least it shouldn't, unless you make lots and lots of characters. Which you probably shouldn't. You won't enjoy it as much. You'll get bored a lot quicker. But, um, but yeah, they were showing off the development environment that they used to make new content, and they were making new content live. Pretty cool. And today, I don't have a lot planned. I'm probably... I might go to Smorgasburg, which is the food festival that I mentioned before. Or I might just go to a coffee shop and work on cast content for a while. Um, I know that I eventually want to end up at a coffee shop working on cast content. <clears throat> I'm just not sure if I want to want to go get some interesting food or not first, since I'm still eating this. And uh, and a lot of the food that, that I can get there is tasty, but not super healthy. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably do laundry so that I'm all ready with a fresh uh, thing of laundry for, uh, for the first day at work, since oftentimes by the time I make it home after work, particularly on, <clears throat> on days when I have events after work, uh, I don't have time to do laundry, so I try and do that on the weekends. Probably a lot of people do. New York has laundry services where you just drop off your laundry and pick it up later. I might think about doing that. <clears throat> Anyhow, I uh, still haven't gotten around to making uh, making Cherry Crisp, and I really want to learn how to do that soon. But uh, I, I, there's no real rush. Uh, it's just I enjoy eating Cherry Crisp, and... Uh, yeah, and I might start making it regularly if it's not too hard to make. So that's uh, that's all for now. Um, I'll see you in about a week.